you saying hi? Go say hi to your friends. Yeah. I think you're gonna take your mouse and go, huh? Yep. Okay, well, she said good morning and hello. Hello and welcome to my channel, Hanley Marie Vintage. Today I'm gonna be sewing a 1950s dress. I am using pattern 1620 by Simplicity. Uh, I actually am wearing this pattern right now. I made this super early in my sewing journey. Uh, this was probably my second or third dress that I ever made. And it's made out of rayon and I really, really love it. I find it really comfortable, but it also makes me feel super cute. And I have a lot of edits that I've made to this pattern. So I know like, how it fits and I could just honestly use an easy win from a sewing project right now right now I'm honestly feeling a little bit burnt out but aside from that like the daylight savings time change has really really messed with my sleep schedule and like my inspiration levels and on top of that I've also recently started medication for my anxiety disorder so I'm just kind of feeling a little bit off um, and so I'm hoping sewing something that I have sewn before will help kind of recenter me. So let's real quick show you the fabric that I'm putting with this pattern. I love this dress I'm wearing, but it's very spring and summer. So I am going to go ahead and do a fall and winter version. I think this will look really cute with sweaters and coats and just a uh, little bit less um, loud and bright and springy. Um, and I really love it and it has like these roses on it. Um, I can't remember where I picked this up. I think I thrifted it. And I'm really, really excited to make this again. And I'm gonna get to use some of the new and exciting techniques I've learned how to do over the past like year or so. Two years, I guess. Um, hi, Spooky. Yeah, we're gonna, we're not sure what Spooky wants. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm excited to make that fall and winter and I'm going to be using new skills such as, goodness child, come on. If you're gonna do it, do it. Um, I'm excited to use new skills such as French seams. This is rayon and rayon works best with French seams over being like kinked. Uh, so I'm excited to use those skills. Um, and then I'm also, I think, just gonna do a much better job. And let's go ahead and dive into cutting. Here I am just smoothing out my fabric to get ready to lay my pattern pieces down. Uh, and with laying these pattern pieces down, I already know I'm gonna be a little bit short, so I'm planning on taking it out of the skirt because it's okay if I have just a few less gathers as opposed to obviously missing like pieces of the bodice. So that is the plan here. And then here I am just cutting out the rayon. This is always really challenging. Um, actually, it's kind of funny because I think of rayon as really, really hard to cut and very slippery and finicky but this time I didn't find that to be the case, so I don't know if I've just improved that much or if I just have better methods or what the deal is, but it was kind of a relief to have this not be a like terrible time. I realized I actually almost never show you guys when I'm cutting out interfacing, and this is an important step. So even though it's boring, here is me just cutting out the interfacing for the collar. I am cutting it out. In this case, it doesn't matter since they're like the same pattern piece, so it doesn't really matter which side. Um, I have the glue dots on the outside in this case. Uh, not that you can really tell, but that is what's going on here. I love this interfacing a lot, and I'll link it down below. It's my favorite for things like rayons or crepes. All right, we are next morning. First of all, I just want to address the weird hair situation. So I thought maybe I could make my hairstyle live longer if I just set the front rollers again last night. Uh, the answer was a clear no because the rest of my hair is almost straight again. So that was a miss, uh, but you're, you're gonna see some weird hair during this video. So I just wanted to, to talk about it. Back to kind of more of the sewing topic, what you're all here for. So yesterday I went ahead and I cut all the fabric. It went better than the first time I cut rayon ever because I think I'm just more practiced and I understand it works better if I have the mat that I move around and all that jazz. So that is done. So today my goal is to assemble the skirt and the bodice separately. And then tomorrow, hopefully all I'll have left is to put them together but we'll see how that goes. So let's go ahead and hop into that footage now. I feel like I'm doing a horrible job showing this to you guys in a way that you can see because my pin heads are clear. I should have used some of my bigger pins, but here I am actually pinning things, like the pins are perpendicular to the edge of the fabric. This just helps with shifting and with rayon that is super important. And in this case, I am pinning wrong sides together because I am prepping this for a French seam. And then another part that I'm pretty bad about showing you guys is me marking where to sew my darts. I just trace a line with a chalk pencil. Sometimes I use my like water disappear pencil but oftentimes I just prefer chalk because it doesn't really bleed through to the other side and I can be lazy and not wash this garment after I'm done sewing it so that is what I'm doing here and I'm just using a cheap plastic ruler to connect the dots and then I am just drawing that line 
Here I'm just taking that line and I'm pinning these two things together. So basically I am just, yeah, taking both sides of the line and I am sticking a pin and I am matching them and that is how I know I have my darts pinned to the like correct size. And here I am just sewing the panels of the skirt together. Again, I'm French seaming, so I am sewing the wrong sides together and then I will be ironing them and flipping them to the other side. Here I am sewing these darts. I sew my darts with a back stitch at the base of the dart and then at the very tippity top. I do three kind of parallel to the edge and then I tie it off with a knot. I find watching videos of things being cut to be very relaxing for me. So here's me cutting down the seam edge for the French seam. I uh, hope you enjoy it. And then here I am pressing that other side of the seam just to get it all ready to be sewn down. Here I am actually sewing the French seams. I love French seams. I can't believe I took so long to learn them and was so afraid of them. They're a great finish for a thing like this. I am just real quick looking down the row of rayon to make sure I didn't um, underestimate my seam allowance here. And then, like I mentioned, I never really show you guys any of the process of me interfacing something. So here is the cut piece of the interfacing, and I am just taking a press cloth in this case, which is just leftover scraps from another project. I am pressing the interfacing to the rayon with a medium temperature and some steam, and this works pretty well and is pretty wrinkle-free. And here I'm prepping all the kind of complicated units, so the collar, the facings, the bow, all the kind of nitty gritty stuff that is just kind of small, and then I am also getting ready to sew the bodice together. And like magic, here are all these things sewn and pressed. Except for the collar, I did kind of want to show you how guys how I clip and like make my collars so they're extra clean. I start by clipping like a lot of the seam allowance off and then I clip into them with little notches to make it so it's easier for there to be like room found when pressing. So that way we get a neater press at the end. And then I use one of my seam pressing tools. I try not to use scissors because it'll a lot of times poke through. So I try to use a tool that's actually intended to press the seam and I shove it in there to get all those little corners out. And I take it back in there whenever I'm ironing and I notice that I think there's like something that's a bit too angular and should be a little smoother. All right, good morning folks. Uh, we are on day two. I've decided to start doing these kind of daily check-ins when I'm like sewing to kind of give you guys a real aspect of like how much time this thing takes. Uh, so yesterday I finished up the bodice, uh, which I will, Spooky's playing under my tripod and she keeps moving it and it's driving me nuts. Then I also have the skirt completely sewed together. I just need to put in the stitches to gather it and then I need to just attach it to the bodice. The other thing with the bodice, which is right here, I've tried it on, I've fitted it, I've done all the things um, and I've put in all the, finishing so like the bias tape the last thing i need to do with the bodice is put on the bow i just was going to show you guys that on camera because i'm actually going to deviate from the pattern because i want just a little bit of a different look to the bow than on my other dress but it's shaping up really really nicely and i'm really excited about it i did have to run to joanne's real quick to get some bias tape i didn't have bias tape in quite the color i wanted and I also needed to get some like matching thread. I started with black thread and then went into matching thread when I got to kind of the parts that were top stitched. I guess yesterday, just to kind of give you a good sense of time, I had the morning to sew and then I had an appointment right at 12.30 and then I was hanging out with a friend after that. And so I was like sewing around that. I'm just trying to give you guys a more realistic idea of how much time it actually takes to do these projects. Today is just attaching the skirt to the bodice, hemming it, putting in the zipper, as well as putting on the bow. So should be hopefully kind of simple. So I'm gonna take you along for that journey now. So here I kind of want to talk to you guys about the bow just because I'm going a little off script. So usually the pattern just has the bow kind of like this uh, with no dangly bits, but I decided I wanted dangly bits. Um, I know, gross, but that's, that's what I'm calling them. Um, because I just like that look. Uh, this I just used a strip of fabric in the same width as the bow to make. Uh, so super simple and easy. And then I'm just kind of folding it and adding it to the back of the bow. And then I will be hand sewing all the parts of the bow together for a really, really clean finish after pinning it. Just because with a hand sewing, I can keep my stitches more invisible and just kind of like maneuver a little bit better obviously than with the machine. Here I am using a I think four millimeter wide stitch for my gathering stitches. I don't use the full five because I think the five then gives me too chunky of seams. I do 
three parallel lines so that way a i have backup if a thread breaks but also it makes it so i don't have to like really track exactly how all my gathers are laying because i have about a half inch ish of wiggle room on where i'm sewing to make sure everything is lined up because it has those three rows uh, because otherwise i just find that when i use especially fabric like rayon it almost drapes like a trash bag because i like get little bits caught where it shouldn't if i don't use this method and here you can see me grabbing these gathers so what I like to do is I like to get some good gathering going and I like to pull it actually all the way through the piece because that starts to get the like the thread to work a little bit easier, which means then you can kind of just like yank your gathers and they'll just automatically form and look really, really nice. And it takes just less work if you start by working them down and getting kind of the fabric used to having the thread move in it. So that's just kind of another fun little trick that I've picked up over the years. And now I have pinned the, my bit to my gathered fabric. I am currently watching Housewives of New York because I'm complete trash. Uh, I like to watch trashy reality TV while I sew, um, but here when I sew the gathers, I am making sure that I am sewing it with the smooth part up. I like to do that because you can have like kind of weird pleats happen in the gather and it might not be too noticeable, but if you have weird pleats or tucks happening in the smooth part of the bodice, it will be noticeable. So I like to be able to monitor that and make sure nothing is like bending in a weird way. And we are to the last part, which is one of my favorite parts. I really love watching trash TV while sewing my hem and having a cat on my lap. I usually prefer her not to be cleaning herself. That's kind of an annoying thing, but in this case, I just turned up the hem three inches. I didn't do a double turn because I specifically used the selvage to, to get to avoid using that and having the bulk. After I finish this hem, we are going to be ready for the reveal. guys we're all done we've just had the reveal I'm in love with this dress super super happy with it so let's start showing you so I do actually have the old dress the second or third dress I made here and I can just tell you already I can see so much improvement in my sewing skills so I absolutely love this dress I love that I did this kind of more dangly bow a huge difference in my experience level from when I made this dress to when I made this dress is just knowing how to work with this type of fabric better and knowing how to get everything pressed really well. Pressing is such an important part of sewing. So I can like really see a difference because my ironing skills are so much higher than what they were, which is kind of like a funny weird thing to say, but it's like true. Ironing is a huge part of sewing. I also feel like I got the gathers more even around the skirt, which I'll show you the other one. And then the facings just sit so much nicer in. And then this collar is lying nice and flat and the inner facing is actually the proper weight. That's another big like learning curve, I guess, is figuring out what inner facing to use where because Old patterns don't really like specify on interfacing all the time. Some of them specify where to cut it out. Some of them don't mention it at all. And then also my zipper is much neater. This zipper is not maybe as neat as I would prefer. I stretched it out a bit. This zipper just is kind of, uh, it's like a weird covered material that just doesn't work quite as well. It zips and it closes. And uh, in this case, I have it under the armpit. That's another big thing about this is now that I've been sewing a little longer, I'm a lot more comfortable alterating things. And so uh, I actually have the zipper going all the way to the armpit on this dress. I don't believe I have that on this dress, but let's actually, let's real quick look at this dress so I can kind of show you the difference that I'm talking about. So this dress here, this was my first ever time sewing with Rayon. I still love this dress, don't get me wrong. And I love the colors and it's super comfy. I did have to tack like every single part of the bow down to get it to sit the way I wanted to. The color is also just like wrinklier or rumplier. It's just like not as nice. Some of that is also like to keep in mind, this dress has actually been washed and worn a bunch and obviously this other one is practically brand new and then the other thing I did is I've now learned that you can pretty much take the zipper all the way up to the armpit if that like like for me I would much rather put that on 
Um, actually, I would probably rather put a zip up at the back, but I don't like figuring that out with a collar like this. So as long as I can at least get like a free armpit, we're good to go. But this one I used, so back when I started vintage sewing, I stubbornly wanted to use non-iron interface because of it being more accurate. But I've kind of just learned like use accuracy where it works for you. But like if it doesn't work for you, do modern touches and I just think that ironed together interfacing is so much better and I also found a higher quality. I think it was a big difference too. I now use a completely different interfacing that I'll link below. Before I used what was just in Joann's. <laughs> Joann's interfacing is like the Pellon or whatever. It's just not as high quality as what I've been buying now and what has made a huge difference for me. I learned where to buy the interfacing I learned to buy from Gertie actually from her book that Heather, aka Eureka Monogram, sent me. The other thing about this one is I had just a whole lot of problems with it stretching here, where the like heaviness in the gathering down below actually stretches out the waistline. So when I'm actually wearing this now, it kind of is like steady, and then it dips a little, and then it's steady again. I think I fixed that with this one. I pinked to this one, which is like, fine but it definitely french seams work better with rayon for like longevity um and like i said this one's been through the wash a few times the other thing i didn't do is i didn't actually tack down any of the interfacings in this dress which i actually am going to go back and do because i think it'll look significantly better and then you can also kind of just see this is uh definitely like wider like this doesn't fit me quite as well as my new one does because now i'm also much more comfortable knowing how to get a pattern to fit me either way i still love that dress i just want to be super clear I think there's a lot of expectation that you might not love something you sew early on, which may be true, but like for me, I find it not to be, I really like a lot of the dresses I made early on because I tried to make things I was excited about and I absolutely love the fabric of the dress I just showed you. This one I just can admit is much like cleaner and more professional also because I've learned that like to gather things nicely, I like to do three rows of gathering stitches with my machine and pull them to get all my gathers like kind of lined up nicely. I'm just, I'm just like significantly better. I have more control in my machine I just have more tricks and I have more experience and so this is just going to be a nicer dress but that's like not really to diss my old sewing um, I think it's really important to know that you've grown and know where you came from and still be really proud from how you started sewing um, because it's a journey um, I can tell you I have now made like real life sewing friends like here in Seattle sewing friends and they all are much more skilled than I am because they have a lot of focus on like doing iterations of patterns over and over again until it fits them perfectly and like I'm not no nearly that level but I hope one day that I can. So wherever you are in your sewing journey this is just to say like enjoy where you're at and love where you're at and try to love the garments you make where you're at and not like beat yourself up. I'm not beating myself up on any of the mistakes I made on that other one because I just I know better now. Um, I know that it's really important to cut on the right grain here so that way it doesn't start to stretch or do weird things down there. Like all of those are things I learned as I sew and all of those are things that you're going to learn as you sew and it's really important to just be like okay and embrace that not like judge yourself or critique yourself too harshly just keep on sewing and keep on learning and keep on doing little tiny tweaks to improve your skills I didn't all of a sudden improve my skills that much overnight it was through practice and trying things and trying to get better and like watching other youtubers and learning from them but that is it for this video. I hope you really enjoyed this. I can tell you this video was a real pick me up for me to make for myself. Like I had said, I, I've like just kind of not been feeling as much myself lately. I also think I'm feeling newly renewed. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, but it's actually sunny outside. Uh, it's been pretty gross in Seattle, like even by Seattle standards recently, which always like kind of brings down my energy. Uh, you've seen, I think a bunch of people walk by in the background. It's because it's sunny and it hasn't been sunny for so long here that everyone's stoked. So with that, I'm going to go and I'm going to get outside for the rest of today, but I hope you enjoyed this video and definitely stick around for more sewing projects. I would love to have you. And if you hit that subscribe button, you'll see what I'm putting out. I have lots of fun sewing planned for you in the future. I will see you next time. Bye.